Hi everyone, Matthew Monis here with Mobile Syrup. And just recently, the Mobile World Congress has come to an end, and a lot of really cool announcements has come from Barcelona, Spain. Awesome new mobile products, some really good accessories, and even virtual reality. Now, whether you've been paying attention or not, you don't have to worry because we have you covered. The first major announcement comes from LG, announcing two mid-range phones called the X-Cam and the X-Screen, both with similar internal specs, but offer two distinct features. The X-Cam comes with a dual camera system, one 5 megapixel and 13 megapixel sensor on the back, while the X-Screen has a dual display similar to the one on the LG V10. But the biggest and most exciting announcement from LG was the LG G5. And that's because the G5 has been completely redesigned compared to previous years. It's now all metal instead of plastic. The screen size has been reduced from 5.5 inches to 5.3, and you now have the option to have an always on display. Now LG says the display only reduces your battery by 0.8% per hour, but it's gonna take some testing to find out exactly how much that is. And with a 2800 milliamp battery inside, it's still unknown how good the battery life will actually be. The good news is that the battery is still swappable as LG is the first company to release a modular phone. The bottom of the phone pops out allowing you to swap batteries or connect various types of other modules. One of them is the LG Cam Plus, a camera grip that adds control like a shutter, video recording button, but also increases the overall battery capacity to 4,000 milliamps. And the other accessory is a portable DAC or otherwise known as a digital to analog converter, co-designed with Bang and Olfelsen that raises audio quality from 24-bit to 32-bit. On the back of the G5 lies two cameras, one 16 megapixel and the other a wide angle 8 megapixel camera. The latter perfect for capturing more people in a selfie or great for wide landscape shots. The software also has been toned down thankfully and is not as disorganized and cartoony as the version before it. LG has also removed some of its own apps, reducing the overall bloat. The G5 will pack a Snapdragon 820 processor, 4GB of RAM, 32GB of storage, a micro SD card slot, and uses a USB Type-C port. The volume controls are no longer on the back, but the power button remains that also acts as a fingerprint sensor, something similar to the Nexus 5X. Release date is sometime in the beginning of April. LG also announced a VR headset called the 360 VR and a remote control bot similar to the BB-8, calling it the LG Rolling Bot. The next major announcement was by HTC, revealing the official price of the HTC Vive Consumer Edition for $800 US and a pre-order date of February 29th. HTC plans to include a pair of Vive base stations, a Vive link box, and a pair of Vive earbuds. The headset requires a very powerful PC to connect to, and for a limited time, the HTC Vive will be bundled with two VR games, one called The Job Simulator, the 2015 Archives, and Fantastic Contraption. Next up was an announcement by HP revealing the Elite X3, a Windows phone that is destined to be a phone, laptop, and desktop. It's an all-in-one device that runs Windows 10 and takes advantage of Continuum, allowing you to use the phone in multiple modes. It has a 6-inch display, a Snapdragon 820 processor, 4GB of RAM, 64 gigabytes of internal storage and a micro SD card slot, expandable up to two terabytes. An iris scanner will be on the front and a fingerprint scanner will be on the back. It will also have a 4150 milliamp battery and support wireless charging. HP is also selling two accessories on the side, a desk dock with a bunch of ports and another accessory called the mobile extender that resembles a laptop, but actually acts as a display, keyboard, and extra battery for the phone itself. No release date has been set as of yet. The next major announcement came from Samsung, announcing the Galaxy S7 and the Galaxy S7 Edge. Both phones look very similar to their predecessors, but bring new refinements and bring back features that were on previous Galaxy devices before it, such as the micro SD card slot and being waterproof. Now the Galaxy S7 still has a 5.1 inch Super AMOLED QHD display, but the Galaxy S7 Edge has been bumped up to 5.5 inches. Both models will take advantage of a new feature that allows the display to always be on, displaying the time, date, and notifications. Now, it's still unknown whether or not the new Edge will replace the Edge Plus. 
Other specs include 4GB of RAM, 32GB of storage, a 3000mAh battery for the S7, and a 3600mAh one for the S7 Edge. The international model, which includes Canada, will have an Exynos 8890 processor, while the US variant will have a Snapdragon 820. Both devices support fast charging, wireless charging, and of course, fast wireless charging. The S7 won't make the switch to USB Type-C and it will retain a micro USB port. The rear facing camera has been reduced from 16 to 12 megapixels but will have larger pixels, 56% more low light and have an aperture of f1.7. Samsung has also managed to reduce the camera bump on the back making it almost flush with the phone itself. Now Samsung has tweaked TouchWiz to be a little less bloated and the app's edge function on the edge variant of the phone will have additional features. The Samsung Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge pre-orders went live on February 22nd and if you pre-ordered, you also get a free Gear VR. The official release date is March 11th. But Samsung wasn't finished with the Galaxy S7. They also announced a 360 degree camera called the Gear 360. The Gear 360 is capable of taking 360 degree photos and videos which you can easily stitch together, share with your friends and upload to YouTube. Next up is Sony and surprisingly they did not announce a new Xperia Z6 but instead released a new lineup of Xperia phones. The Xperia X, the Xperia X Performance and the Xperia XA. Think of these phones as offering performance somewhere between a mid-range device and a fat flagship one. The Xperia Performance is the fastest of the bunch and will have a Snapdragon 820 processor, while the X will use a Snapdragon 650 and the XA will sport a MediaTek processor. The two high-end models will both come with the same rear-facing 23 megapixel camera that's found on the Xperia Z5, but will have a new technology called Predictive Hybrid Autofocus. All phones come with a 5 inch display but the two high end models will have a 1080p display with 3GB of RAM while the XA will only sport 2GB of RAM and have a 720p display. The two high end models will have a fingerprint scanner with only the Xperia performance being waterproof. And finally, the good news is that all three of these devices will be making its way to Canada sometime this summer. But that's not all that Sony announced. They also announced a slew of accessories. The Xperia Ear, a new wireless earpiece that dictates incoming notifications and directions. The Xperia Eye, life logging camera. The Xperia Projector that projects touch enabled images on the wall. And the Xperia Agent, a voice controlled device similar to Amazon's Echo. HTC did not reveal anything about the 1M10, but they did announce a new budget to mid-range desire phones, three specifically with flashy new colors. And finally, Xiaomi announced their latest flagship, the Mi 5, which boasts top of the end specs and design. The Mi 5 looks similar to the Note 5, but offers the latest Snapdragon 820 processor, 128 gigabytes of storage space, a 3000 milliamp battery, four gigabytes of RAM, all for $354 US. Now the phone will make its way to China and India, but there's no word on whether or not it will hit North America. So that wraps up the most important announcements from the Mobile World Congress in Barcelona, Spain. I wonder what your favorite device or announcement was from the Congress in the comments below. I wanna thank everyone out there for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, feel free to hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. And as always, don't forget to visit us at www.mobilesyrup.com.